There is a popular belief that having the right model guarantees the right forecast. And unfortunately, that doesn't actually work in both directions. You can have a very good model, and it ends up forecasting very badly. And you can have an actually very bad model in that it doesn't describe reality very well that forecasts very well. An example of the latter that people often forget about is the Ptolemaic epicycle theory that forecast eclipses of the moon on a regular basis quite accurately, but it's complete nonsense. There's nothing like that out there. The converse is, of course, Apollo 13, where NASA was using Newton's laws and extremely good forecasting algorithms to predict when it would get to the moon. They were really correct with Apollo 12 and Apollo 14, but Apollo 13's never got to the moon, as we all know it, actually went wildly off course. It went off course because of an event that wasn't thought about, namely the explosion of an oxygen cylinder. It did not refute Newton's laws and it did not reject the forecasting algorithms that NASA used because shortly after the explosion, they used both again for the new trajectory of the rocket to bring it this astronaut safely back to Earth. So this prompts two questions. First of all, once a bad event has happened, like the oxygen cylinder exploding or its equivalent in the economy, can we then correct our forecast to bring them back on track and not be systematically wrong for prolonged periods? The other question is the more difficult one of, can you forecast such events? Now, many of them, like the oxygen cylinder exploding, are just unforecastable. But it's not obvious that the 2008 financial crisis was unforecastable. One may not have predicted the Lehman Brothers' demise, but one could certainly see that there were serious problems in the economy at the time, which might well lead to a crash. 